Hello guys, today in another After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I did this scene from a Wonder Woman video I made with my friend Alexi. You can see that she knocks a gun out of this guy's hand and it goes flying past the camera frame, the camera lens. This is the actually original footage here in Adobe Premiere. You can see that she actually just knocks the gun out of the dude's hand. And so the effect I'll be showing you today is how to get rid of a falling gun with content aware fill and also using Element 3 to custom rotate a flying gun through the screen. Before we get started, I would also like to mention that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, we're gonna right click this clip and open it up in After Effects. So obviously first things first, we wanna get rid of this gun that falls out of his hand. So what we'll do is from this point here, we are going to grab the pin tool and we're just gonna cut out a hole around the gun. And if we hit M twice to drop down the masking menu, let's set this to none and create a position for mask path, a keyframe position for mask path, um, and just a frame after he hits it, we can drag the mask off screen. This is basically, this mask will be the guide layer for content to wear fill to understand what it needs to cut out. So pardon me while I go frame by frame. You do this too in your clip. To get rid of the gun, you basically just have to create a hole. After Effects will gener automatically, artificially fill in for you. And here we're almost done. It is almost out of frame, bam. So if we watch that back, you can see that my gun is now masked out from the moment she hits it. And so what we're gonna do is get rid of the contents. We're gonna get rid of the contents underneath of this mask. So if we go up to window and then we go to, where does bitch at? We go to content aware fill. Sorry, I have no clue why my thing is framed like this, bam. And we're gonna do object. You can see under content aware where fill, it gives you a fill method, and we are fi we are um, we are getting rid of an object. We'll select object. Let's type in lighting correction, right? And what we're gonna do now, before we uh, do this, let's go to this mask and go from none to add. Well, I guess I'll invert it. Feather the edges a little bit. So this hole is basically what After Effects is now about to get told to fill in. We're we're filling in this hole, guys. So we'll click on the layer. And hit, and hit generate fill layer. And now it's going to take like a minute or two to automatically generate a new background where this hole is. Did it do it already? Oh wow, it did it already. Sorry, that was so fast, I, I, even I was caught off guard. So if we watch this back frame by frame, see now the gun is gone. Where the gun at? I don't know. So you can see as soon as he hits it out of, as soon as she hits it out of his hand, look, it's gone. So we got rid of that. You can see some, distortion where the mask was. You can see some distortion from where the gun was, like right here on her dress and like her leg. There's some weird things right there, but like uh, I think it did a really good job. Those are like the smallest little artifacts. So if we watch that back in real time, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's not bad, especially considering there's gonna be a CG gun flying at the camera. Those, those little artifacts that the uh, content aware fill leaves, like this right here, like I have no clue what that is. Um, those become basically invisible, especially if you have a CGI gun flying at you. Okay, so now that we've created a scene where there can be a gun because you don't see the gun falling, we're going to open up Element 3D. And the way we do that is we come up to Layer, New, and Solid. I'm gonna name this Gun. Right now, it's still just a black solid. So let's open our Effects and Presets panel and type in Element. And if we drag Element onto our black gun layer, <clears throat> We just have to come up to scene setup, and this gives us the UI, the user interface, yep, for, for Element 3D. I've purchased the projectile and weapons pack from Video Copilot, which is basically all these 3D models of weapons, like here's a missile, um, and they've got one that's just a nice black gun, this guy here. And so now that we have this gun, I'll just hit okay. You can now see that this gun has popped up, but it's pointing away from the camera, so it just looks like, um, it's the black stick. But within Element 3D, if we drop down Group 1 and Particle Replicator, we can uh, drop down Rotation and change our gun to be the position that we want. Right here. I'll get rid of it for a second, invisible it. So the moment the gun leaves his hand, right here. So I will make the gun as big as the gun he's holding. So if I drop down Particle Look, 
There's a, a thing called particle size. This is basically just scale. And I will use the X, y, and X and Y positions in element to make this gun the same size. Okay, perfect. And you can tell if I invisible this layer, we see that the gun uh, he's holding is very washed out. Like the blacks have been uh, risen up to be very pale. So what we'll do is just from the start, I will grab the curves effect and I'll drop it onto this gun and I'll just um, crank the blacks up. That looks pretty realistic, right? Let's see. What does the gun actually look like? Oh, it's a little darker than that. That looks right to me. Actually, let's see, let's see. So I'll invisible the gun layer over and over to try and blend it in properly. I think that's good enough for me. And so once you've blended in the gun from that scene, as soon as she hits it right here, bam, we can start animating the gun to start flying at the camera. And so what we'll do is we'll keep it simple. The moment that she hits the gun out of his hand right here. If we come up to element 3D, let's create a keyframe position for X, Y, and Z. Sorry, I stuttered. X, Y, and Z, and we'll also create keyframes for all these different rotations. And so, if we look at the footage, we can guess that the gun will be across the screen by here. So, bam. And maybe by here, we can crank the Z position for the gun to be near the camera. I will bring down the Y position and the Z position to just make it fly past the camera just like this. So if we watch that back, it's like she hit the gun straight at the camera lens. <laughs> so she hits it out of his hand and it goes flying by the camera like this. I'll cut off everything except for this part of the gun. And so from here, we can tell, we can obviously tell that this looks terrible by the way, right? We can actually delete these keyframes now. I just wanted to show you what we're doing. So from this moment, we can probably adjust the keyframe positions of X and Y to go up and have the Z position kind of maybe come up top. So it's like she's hitting the gun up and we can animate it to come forward and down like this. So if we watch the keyframes back, it's like up and down. And I'll actually get rid of these middle keyframes. What we're gonna do to make this look a lot less janky is we're going to rotate it within this 3D space. So we created keyframes for X, Y, and Z rotation. I will easy ease those, and I will just crank up one of these rotations. And so it spins as it's flying. Look at that, that was pretty good. All I did was crank up the X rotation. So she hits it, bam. Obviously the timing is a bit off now. She hits it and then the gun goes flying like this. Maybe if we drag out these keyframes a little, maybe it could happen even sooner. And because we content aware filled out the original gun, it looks as natural as it can get. Why do I actually like this a lot? I feel like maybe I can adjust this keyframe here. See what that looks like. <laughs> My actual example is way cooler than this, I feel like, but I, I honestly am so happy with this right here. That might just be the tutorial. So honestly, how you get rid of a gun to make it fly across the screen is basically content aware filling out the gun that you're dropping. So you get rid of one gun, and then all you have to do is blend in the CG gun with the original one and just kind of keyframe it to fly across the screen. And to make it extra convincing, you can click this uh, button here, which is the three symbols for motion blur. And then, I don't know if you can see that, but now the gun has motion blur. You know what, maybe why it looks kind of weird, it should be flying this direction. Let's try that. This also looks kind of cool. She so hits it, bam, and it goes flying. So here's, I guess, just another, uh, here's just another uh, adjustment. But basically all you need to do really is just keyframe the position and the rotation of a 3D gun with element. And then you can have a gun fly across the screen. And honestly, it looks really convincing as long as it's this fast. Like you can see it's only on screen for like, I don't know, maybe seven frames, but it looks really nice. And that is how you make a flying gun with element 3D. I hope this was useful. <laughs> I hope you liked this tutorial. Um, this Wonder Woman little short film video, I think is one of my favorite things I've made last year. Uh, my friend Lexi is such a great Wonder Woman, uh, and I loved using Element 3D to, use, to do the gun effect. And now you can do it too. And of course, now we have to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I changed into my fun shirt for this.
because Squarespace is so fun. But anyways, Squarespace, an all-in-one platform from online stores to marketing tools and analytics. I like mentioning this a lot because uh, I was a photographer and now I'm a videographer. But if you're a photographer and you want a really cool place to put all of your work, well, you have to get Squarespace. They have portfolios and galleries features, which allows you to display your work to the world in a professional way. And not to mention these templates that you can upload your photos to are award-winning designer templates. So you're literally putting your work somewhere that makes it come off even more professional. And also, Squarespace has some killer analytics. So if you want people to come check out your photography, you'll be able to see where they're coming from, which photos they're staying at, clicking on, the services they're asking for, the products that they're buying, etc. So if you wanna keep good track of your business, your website, and who's coming to it, you have to use Squarespace. And lastly, it's one of the best website services to where you can stay connected with everything. Squarespace lets you connect any of your social medias to the website. So if you have a SoundCloud and you want to promote your music on your website, you can do that with Squarespace. You can embed your SoundCloud account. Let's say you're a fashionista on Instagram. You can embed your Instagram account into your Squarespace website. So anybody can come to your website and find your other social medias through Squarespace's connected services. And the best part is I got you guys a discount. So if you want to get 10% off your first website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you guys learned something new today, and where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.